clock is, is up. Ding! Now it's time for us to have a chat. Now it's time for us to be heard. And that is what we're going to become. Messages being pumped out to New Zealand audiences. Fuck no. The sun has not gone down yet. There is still plenty of daylight left in this game. And all of you are fucked. And I mean that in the, in the most sincere possible way. That there is no legal outcome that you guys are going to be able to escape with regard to your culpability in a list of crimes longer than State Highway 1. Not hidden somewhere deep within the dark web. And I think we need to fight back. But the only way to fight back is get out more and more and more information out there and just drown their feeds. But in plain sight and being accessed by hundreds of thousands of us. This whole thing is just ludicrous, it's absolutely ludicrous, and I just think we have to start laughing at them. Like, what? You, you, what? You're going to let Cindy tell you when you can do a wee? You're going to let Cindy tell you when you can <laughs> buy a coffee? Seriously? Messages from people who may appear to have no common interests, but who are strategically intertwined, united in their uprising against authority. Because there is going to come a time when we are going to hold them accountable and we are going to take these mofos out. Legally. What you need to know, you coup papa, is that we're coming for you, okay? You need to prepare your family and let them know that you're going to go to jail soon for supporting genocide and crimes against humanity. You'll have seen these words seeping into everyday usage. This is a time that favours falsehoods and outrage and sensational fringe opinion. But where did it come from? How did we become a country where extreme violent language and death threats are so commonplace now? Arrest these people, put them on trial. The government for democide, all the little minions that have been helping propagate this mainstream media, medical council, and all the other idiots who have just pushed this agenda without anything to back it, they need to be held to account. And that is including arresting them and putting them on trial. And then, if it's bad enough, execute the bastards. Stuff Circuit has analysed the backgrounds and beliefs of the key people driving a new, violent, misinformed New Zealand and what they want to happen next. And the sooner those of you who colluded in this mass genocide and degradation of the human condition, the sooner you turn yourselves in, the better. We've followed advice for how to report dangerous speech when it's justified to give a platform to extreme ideas. The test, has it reached a tipping point where they're having an impact beyond their own communities? We are well past that tipping point because of the numbers of people they're reaching and because of what they say, which you will hear unfiltered. Yes, construct the gallows, get the nooses hung on the trees at Parliament. Let's do this. I'm not averse to a beheading liberty. I'm not scared of blood. I think that evil needs to have its blood spilt or burnt. Gotta love that sound of execution. It's gonna happen. The media in this country need fucking burning. They really seriously need burning. This is the language of people who say we're all victims and perpetrators of a deep state propaganda machine. But actually, could it be they are the true propagandists? These kind of things grow when you're not noticing that they're there. So we need to talk about it. This is where it all converges. Peace and love, brother! Peace and love, guys! It is billed as a protest of peace and love born out of opposition to government COVID measures. But the path to Wellington began years ago, and it's anything but peaceful. What we're about to show you is not an exhaustive list because that list would be too long. <laughs> But we want to introduce you to some of the key drivers in New Zealand of false information and dangerous conspiracy. You'll see how they're linked together, what they want us all to believe, and why. 
pedophiles, satanic ritual abuse, adrenochrome, uh, trafficking on a scale you've never ever imagined, cloning of humans for God's sake, it's just enormous. And Extreme so right conspiracy theorist Damien Dement is a New Zealand citizen and a super spreader of false claims, racism and appeals for violence. He was permanently banned from Twitter um, at the beginning of 2021 for tweets that he, he sent around the January 6th insurrection in the United States, which promoted um, similar acts taking place here in New Zealand and, and lauded um, the rioting, death and destruction that took place at the Capitol. New Zealand politicians uh, will fear for their lives and rightfully so. Have a good one. This man is part of an army. The next on our list, Calvin Elp, first came to public attention 20 years ago as a disaffected former soldier who claimed he had his own army and was prepared to go into battle with the government. To preserve what's inherently ours, I'll take it right to the end. If that means picking up arms, if it means a confrontation with the, the oppressors in a heartbeat. He led the far-right Direct Democracy Party, which stood in the 2005 general election. I'd like to welcome the party leader, the man who started it all, the man to tell you all about it. Please welcome Calvin Elms. Real articulate speech ready for you all. But to be honest, I think it's a waste of time. He had a go at acting. Well, this looks serious. Oh no, I haven't forgotten a birthday, anniversary, anything. I am pregnant. Congratulations, Dad. <laughs> And in 2021, ALP launched Counterspin Media. We must hold the line. We are in a war. It's an information war. A far-right online TV channel running at that stage on the platform of former Trump campaign chief Steve Bannon. Are you prepared to give it up and let these elites take it and just give it away? That's the power that elected Donald Trump. Bannon believes the 2020 US election was stolen and calls mainstream media the opposition. And all the mainstream media hailed as the great podium of truth, I call it bullshit, has um, turned out to be completely and utterly false, fake, phony liars. Incredible, absolutely incredible. This is about identity making and meaning making to, um, to claim a space of leadership, a claim of space of importance. So if the military command is watching this, and I guarantee you they will be... Counterspin live streamed throughout the Wellington occupation, with ALP repeatedly calling for an overthrow of the government, including a military coup. We'll be happy for it to be in your safe hands, because the criminals that occupy Parasite Palace, laughingly called the Beehive, need to be gone. Fellow Counterspin presenter Hannah Spearer is Calvin Elp's partner. She describes herself as an anti-feminist and a patriot. To resist, of course, this tyrannical government, which is not going to stop. It's a system, of course, as we all know, just uh, going around the globe. And, um, you know, at this point, it's slave slavery versus freedom. Hannah Spearer is welcoming to Kyle Chapman, the former leader of the National Front and the neo-Nazi right-wing resistance. Some stupid things. They like to call you a white supremacist. What have you got to say uh, to those people who like to try and discredit you and everybody else because of that? The, the mainstream media is just a joke now. We're very happy to support you guys. We love Counterspin. Hannah Spearer is also known as Sarah Smith, under that name in 2020, she was speaking publicly about satanic ritual abuse. To kind of stand up in front of a group like that and credit Trump for, for his work on child trafficking and raising awareness about the topic is just phenomenal. Another on our list, Carlene Heriora, spoke at the same event about child sex trafficking. And it's bigger than anything I could have ever imagined uh, myself being involved in. Hedy Order describes herself as a wannabe musician who has mostly worked in hospitality. 
But in 2021, she led the sovereign hikoi of truth, which looks on the face of it like indigenous activism. I am no longer going to stand aside and watch my people be slowly destroyed by a government that is a corporation but spreads an assortment of conspiracy theories, including anti-Semitism. Although Evelyn Rothschild looks like a harmless grey-haired old man, make no mistake about it, Rothschild and his ancestors have hand-picked presidents, crashed stock markets, bankrupted nations... And climate change denial. In fact, growing numbers of experts see the whole issue as a sleight of hand, a climate hustle. Hedy Orr's relationship with Counterspin Media's Calvin Alp goes two ways. She amplifies his content to her thousands of followers. I'm, you know, connected to him, and I always will be. I will not ever give that relationship up for anyone. We know from historical experience of, of how white supremacism or neo-Nazism or white nationalist identity works, that there are, are always selected and groomed and duped members of minorities and women who are brought into the fold, made to feel part of the in-group, and then paraded as evidence that this is, could not possibly be a racist or sexist movement because these people are part of it. Here's Hedy Order 2 with Kyle Chapman in 2020. Those people are not your friends and allies. If you are in a shared space with white supremacists, people on the far political right, they do not have your and our best interests at heart. They can't exactly say I'm a white supremacist when half of my family are Jigaboo. You know what I mean? I call them Jigaboos for fun. Um, but my sister's married to a Samoan. The go-to legal mind on Counterspin is former senior law lecturer at AUT, Amy Benjamin. I sort of woke up to the nature of uh, evil and uh, elite criminality in about 2010. And uh, before I was a law lecturer, um, and uh, you know, I've been going down rabbit holes ever since. Amy Benjamin has written that 9-11 was a false flag. That's a military term you'll often hear in these groups to claim an act like an attack was faked or staged to look like it was carried out by someone other than the true perpetrator. She makes the same claim about the Christchurch mosque terror attacks. You know, Christchurch was such, such an obvious false flag. You know, but I, I think that will be revealed in due course. I, I, don't, think, uh, I don't think this is going to go on forever. I think Christchurch will be, will be revealed eventually. I do. Uh, but of course, uh, Amy Benjamin also makes her own videos, which she publishes on a fringe site. They play you every time. Not you, my listeners, but the... The sheep who don't listen to my broadcasts. Our next guest is Chantelle Baker. Chantelle has been outspoken on COVID regulations, on changing New Zealand's name to the unpronounceable Latour, whatever, Aratoria or whatever. Conservative Christian Chantelle Baker has a huge social media following and occasionally gets mainstream media invitations. This isn't about giving control to this one party. This is actually about standing up as individuals and taking back our freedom and taking back our democracy. You shouldn't have to have her audience got to know her as the daughter of former leader of the new Conservatives, Leighton Baker. The show's not over. We haven't given up, we're not going to give up, don't you give up. But her following quickly eclipsed his. Just had a chat to Dad and apparently he was threatened by the police this morning. Um, Building the during the Wellington they, occupation they, they, to the point that her live streams on the day of the riot had more than a million views. Mainstream media, as usual, in their little perch. They're safe little perch, guys. Don't mind them. They're just spreading lies and propaganda to all of New Zealand. We'd first seen that anti-media feeling at this 2020 rally in Auckland. Tomorrow they're going to report that we should be punished for spreading disinformation and holding dangerous views. Where we met Claire Deeks, who was running in the election for the far-right Advance New Zealand Party. But I look at this crowd and I look at you, and you are not dangerous. You are not conspiracy theorists. You are truth seekers. 
and successful mum blogger Claire Deegs. Morning to you both. Claire Deegs was a lawyer who threw that in to become a food blogger. When did you start the blog? A couple of years ago, actually. Yeah, I went from not cooking at all to really getting into it. After failing to get into Parliament, she teamed up with lawyer turned knitting pattern designer Libby Johnson. I'm doing a variety of things on my needles. I'm actually doing a shawl at the moment. I'm about to start another shawl and then a, so a fairly lightweight jumper. And educator turned crochet designer Alia Bland. Uh, you can use crochet to do anything around mm -hmm. the house. I think we're over a thousand people now on our mailing list and... Seeing an opportunity in the pandemic, combining the social media skills they learned to set up Voices for Freedom. Uh, and we are organising some bit of activism around the country. It's going to be amazing and that is all coming at you very soon. But we will be um, seeking your help in order to fund us. So, so the semi-innocuous mother's circle um, yoga mums appeal to what they're doing. They're sophisticated actors, they have really nice merchandise, their website works well, they've always been really good at the communication piece. And are they innocuous? Well, they're very non-innocuous, Paula. They are quite dangerous because not only have they created a reality in which nobody else is to be trusted, but the messages they are spreading are not, are not just messages about COVID-19. We have one problem on this planet. We have a secret government system and it's killing us. Mm. There are two others we've investigated who we would like to tell you about. Do you mind if I just play you a bit of audio? I'd just like to see or hear your reaction to this. No, I think it needs to be lawful. When but they are currently facing criminal charges over alleged sabotage and threats. Contempt of court laws mean we can't, at this point, say any more. It's deeply, deeply shocking, and I think that any reasonable New Zealander would listen to that and be deeply shocked by it. All of the people on our list will tell you they are not conspiracy theorists, and they no doubt believe that's true. But it's essential to understand the conspiracy theories like QAnon feeding their beliefs, whether they realise it or not, because you'll recognise it throughout so much of what they say and do. You know, what is a human brain like? Uh, we like good stories. Uh, we like to have knowledge that is surprising and other people don't have. We like to see patterns in, in a complex information environment. And we like to go on scavenger hunts where we pick up clues. And when we have opinions, we like to connect to other people who share those opinions. This is the things that, that our human brains love doing. And what is that describing? That's describing exactly how a conspiracy like QAnon works. You want to hear about Q? It's a reality of beyond what you can imagine. QAnon began in 2017 as a specific conspiracy theory about the US Democrats and Hillary Clinton who QAnon said were part of a global secret cabal of satanic paedophiles. Controlled by the deep state, by the cabal. Much of what they claimed had been around for years. Josie recognised it. I was lit on fire, like, I was very excited. Josie fell down the conspiracy theory rabbit hole in 2009 and stayed deep in it for 10 years, also believing a cabal of elites was running the world. What made it believable that's a tough one. I know at the time I thought there were, I believed there were things about how society was and ran that seemed really dog shit to me. It was, you know, the bad guys, the Illuminati, the New World Order, they were the ones making this happen. But what happens when the conspiracy theories' predictions don't come true? This is the voice of Counterspin's Hannah Spearer in 2020, speaking about former President Donald Trump. But I truly believe that that man is working with some amazing people in America and worldwide, including military personnel. And I do believe that he has the best intentions for humanity and that he is draining the swamp. When a lot of the milestones that, uh, that came and went in the QAnon's original conspiracy theory, that Donald Trump on a particular day was going to arrest all of the democratic elites across America. Now that didn't happen, QAnon didn't go away. 
it merely uh, evolved to change their opinions and to incorporate everything else from anti-vaccinations to anti-pandemic lockdown measures. With one omnipresent clarion call. QAnon uh, were expert at this. Um, they put out something that is a very value-laden term in the United States, which is freedom. And they found that that was a, a wonderfully unifying banner for not just people in the US, but people around the world. It's such a unifying term, one of our key groups put it in its name. And you'll notice that's why they don't put a banner on their website saying, we are anti-vaxxer. Anti they put a banner on their website saying, we love freedom. You know, of course they're going to label us anti-vaxxers, and we know we're not. We are for pro-medical freedom, for non-discrimination, for non-coercion, OK? Let's analyse that. A timeline is useful against what was happening in New Zealand and the rest of the world. Because as far back as 2018, Future Voices for Freedom leader Alia Bland is posting about the MMR vaccine. When the measles outbreak hits in 2019, she posts about vaccine failure, encouraging natural immunity, believing it to be more effective than vaccines. It's worth remembering the measles outbreak killed more than 80 children in Samoa and put 380 Aucklanders in hospital. I hear that New Zealand has an epidemic of measles right now. Shock horror. By September that year, she's appearing on an online Australian anti-vax program. And there's precious little information in any of these reports as to how to support someone with, with um, measles other than get vaccinated. Claire, thank you so much for joining us on the podcast. How are you, sister? Hey, I'm great. Thank you very much for having me, Pete. In 2020, another Voices for Freedom leader, Claire Dix, is interviewed by celebrity chef turned anti-vax conspiracy theorist, Pete Evans. You come into the vaccines and you get to your questioning where that just gets you in that mindset of knowing that there's a lot of things that are not said and a lot of agendas at play. Everything, it's like a web interconnecting. In 2020, Claire Deeks is also posting about another renowned anti-vaxxer, promoting interviews like this. And the way in which we look for solutions and adaptability is through viruses. It's, that's how we do it. That's how life has always done it. And so uh, if you damn a virus, you have just damned the language of, of life itself. So why does Voices for Freedom's history on vaccinations matter? Well, I think they're a particularly effective example of how you draw people in by appearing to be one thing, uh, but in actual fact being something else. So somebody who was a little bit nervous about, didn't really want to believe in COVID-19 or didn't trust the vaccine because they had some nerves around it, goes to one of those locations, has their confirmation bias confirmed by someone who is kind and warm or appears erudite. And then that person can say nearly anything and still be trusted. And so that's what's taken place. Once that trust is gained, followers can be carefully taken into new, more radical territory. USA! 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 In January 2021, the QAnon conspiracy theory that the US election was rigged and stolen violently transfers from online to real life as rioters storm the capital, saying, we're taking our country back. We gotta take him in waves! Get in there and get And in New Zealand, Voices for Freedom co-leader Alia Bland posts a video that claims agent provocateur tactics, or plants, were used. And, uh, but what we've seen so far, and being physically present, Antifa clearly led the attack. That was utterly obvious. Why is a Voices for Freedom leader promoting false claims in favour of far-right insurrectionists? The sense of identity that they like to project is that kind of health-focused, food-focused, kind of natural goodness, essential oils. So how does that fit? Yeah, I mean, the, the role of women and, and wellness in fascist and proto-fascist movements has always been really significant. Uh, even in um, Italy and Germany in the 1920s, a lot of proto-fascist ideas came from or were augmented by ideas around health, well-being, rejection of modern medicine, um, 
you know, because obviously if you are um, an Uber race, then um, you don't need modern medicine. Are you saying Voices for Freedom are agents of fascism? All of the different groups that we see in New Zealand at the moment have features of fascistic ideas around power and control and then features of white or national identity ideas that are related to fascism. If a Voices for Freedom link to fascism seems unlikely, it's not to fascists. Stuff Circuit has seen transcripts of messages between former National Front leader Kyle Chapman and others about potential political leadership. They identify the dark-haired lady from Voices for Freedom as a prospective leader, as the far right looks for divisive issues to exploit. In chat rooms, New Zealand's biggest neo-Nazi group, Action Zealandia, says hopefully mandatory vaxxers will be the flashpoint. Voices for Freedom wants the same thing. It's February 2021, and as vaccinations of frontline staff begin, Voices for Freedom encourages followers to swarm social media. And one thing that we wanted to do is to flood the zone. Flood the zone is a strategy of American far-right political advisor Steve Bannon, saturate with content to exploit people's confusion and distrust. Let's flood the zone. Let's play them at their own game. Welcome everybody to Voices for Freedom. Um, my name is Claire Deeks and I'm a qualified lawyer and health advocate here in New Zealand. In mid-2021, Claire Deeks interviews a German-American lawyer. This has never been about health. It looks as though this is about health. It looks as though there's a pandemic. Who sets up what he calls a grand jury criminal investigation into global leaders' response to COVID. This case involving the most heinous crimes against humanity committed under the guise of a corona pandemic on a global scale. You had a look at it. Does it have any legitimacy? It has no legitimacy whatsoever. It, it's a sham. It might look legit though, and on the list of international lawyers assisting the process, Claire Deeks described as attorney at law. That is one of the ways they're very dangerous. So their engagement with that kind of international space brings back into Aotearoa a sense of this isn't just talk, you know, this is a real thing. It's easy to make it seem a real thing when you have a captive audience, because by now all our key influences are continually pushing a theme. Journalism is irredeemably corrupt, you know, uh, for various reasons, controlled by five multinational corporations that are very close to the so-called deep state. It's a clever strategy. Don't trust the media, just trust us. And even when Facebook shuts down Voices for Freedom for misinformation, it's ready to go on new, benign-sounding platforms. I think the days here could be numbered, so if you can please sign up to Gab, it's really great over there. It is such a relief to be somewhere where when you're watching, you're not having to think, oh, what, you know, are they going to, like, um, you know, censor me here or there. So. The Gab um, account and Telegram as well. It's more like a backup at the moment. The Telegram's a little bit like Messenger. It's quite easy once you get the hang of it. These um, are proudly unregulated platforms. Here. Gab is known as a haven of the far right. It was one of the favourite sites of the Christchurch mass shooter. The quote on Voices for Freedom's Gab page is a verbatim QAnon line. And Telegram is where posts like this and these on the Counterspin Media page are run of the mill. Telegram simply does not care. I mean, Telegram is a place where you can see stuff that is classified in New Zealand most days because it is so violent. They don't care. They don't care. Apparently not. We ask Telegram about its role in the spread of content like this we get no response. New Zealand will move to alert level four from 11.59 p.m. tonight. In these flourishing chat rooms, August 17, 2021 marks a turning point. Researchers notice the big posters and their audiences becoming much more active and for longer. And we were seeing spikes um, early in the morning, in the middle of the day, and then late into the night. So people were clearly spending too much time on the internet. I'm not going to be told what to do by some legal fiction government who's making out that there's some sort of health crisis going on right now and I literally see no one dying, okay? This is all bullshit. A lot of people do ask about the Nuremberg Code. 
What is your take on the Nuremberg Code? The plan for Nuremberg 2.0 takes off where politicians, public servants, academics, journalists, anyone judged to have committed a crime against humanity would be tried and could be hung. People can up or down vote who most deserves to be punished. And it's brandished as if it does have authority, does it? Absolutely not. Patently ridiculous. So the Nuremberg Code is the code of basically professional medical ethics that grew out of the Nuremberg trials in the post-World uh, War II era, where Nazis, medical practitioners and other scientists were tried for crimes against humanity. And those were some of the worst known crimes against um, human beings in, in living history. It's incredibly, not only inappropriate in terms of it being incorrect, um, but, but it's, it's incredibly offensive. And researchers start to see the violent misogyny and conspiracies transferring from the chat rooms to the mainstream. That repeatedly talk about um, physical harm, rape, execution, death to myself, my colleagues, and to women journalists and women members of parliament, including the Prime Minister. Did you see the one um, Jab Cinder 2? Yes. She's coming back for your children. Did no, you see the picture? And they've done her as a witch. <laughs> the sovereign citizens' common law movement, those like Carlene Heriora, who believe the government is a corporation and its laws are illegitimate, gains traction too. Welcome to the family, family Louise. Family. With branches yeah. popping up all over the country, complete with induction ceremonies for the new self-styled sheriffs. Oh, yeah. we're, we're all, this is the day we've declared our day. country back. And now that we have yeah. the regular use of completely violative language around execution, Nuremberg 2.0, so a whole bunch of ideas which inside those words is the idea of death, of, of execution, uh, alongside the sovereign citizen uh, sheriffs who are going to somehow do this, you have kind of both the threat and the way in which it will be enacted. A shift in the threat is being noticed by the government group assessing risk to national security. Now there is a distinct element that is politically motivated violent extremism that is, might loosely be described as anti-authority. The Combined Threat Assessment Group is monitoring extremist violence in opposition to COVID measures internationally and predicts it's highly likely to influence our domestic terrorism threat. What we are looking for are people who have got actual intent and capability to be conducting an attack. How many would fit into that group? How many people have the intent? We are investigating approximately 40 to 50 individuals at any one time that we would describe as having a violent extremist ideology. That doesn't mean that all of those people are planning to conduct an attack imminently, so I do want to provide some reassurance about that. I think what my investigators would tell me is that the temperature has risen though, so the level of concern about each person is probably more serious than it was even in, you know, in the last few years, I would say. The investigators warn the threat is larger than just that watch list, because moderates in the anti-vaccination community are being increasingly exposed to extremist QAnon and sovereign citizen ideas, and risk being radicalised. A month later, Carleen Hedioda's sovereign Hikoi mobilises, aiming to drive through Auckland's lockdown border. Stand up against this government who have rained tyranny down upon our lives for 18 months solid. We have had enough. Here is a message to the resistance. And yeah, I'm wearing camo because I'm ready to go full war on these assholes. And a Voices for Freedom supporter, Lauren Bransgrove, threatens health workers who will vaccinate children. We will rip the bribes from your hands, we will slash your tyres and we will remove the poison from the truck. If you come for my children, 
Rest assured we will be coming for you. While Voices for Freedom leadership seeks growth advice from a hero of the anti-vaccination movement, Robert F. Kennedy Jr. What do we even do? We, we tried to put some ads in the paper down here just about freedom of speech. We booked them out, cost thousands, tens of thousands of dollars that we'd arranged. It was only about freedom of speech and they were pulled at the very last minute because we apparently are dangerous people. How else do we get get the word out to people and how do we change their minds? How do we open their eyes to all this? We need to give them an alternative narrative. Do you know somebody who's been injured? That's another question to ask. Well, it's this technique of having the apocryphal uh, anecdote that everyone knows. Uh, well, I saw someone who, who had the vaccine and, and had some some uh, adverse health consequence. Uh, these are these are techniques that they refined with the MMR vaccine, uh, with the flu vaccine, uh, for years and years before the COVID vaccine came out. And uh, his time has come. That's why he's giving strategic advice to people. Imagine if you were some crackpot niche expert in something that nobody cared about, and all of a sudden it became a global life-changing event for everyone. Posts about adverse vaccine reactions and exaggerated claims about the numbers are widely shared. And Voices for Freedom ends 2021 with more than 30,000 people in its local groups. Freedom! 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 All that hard work building audiences these past two years is about to have its biggest payoff and recruitment opportunity. You can understand that the government does not like the fact that people stand up correct. The government crossed the line and we draw the line. Thank you. It starts in Canada as the Truckers Freedom Convoy rolls into the streets of Ottawa. Inspired, multiple Facebook groups and Telegram channels emerge here, which are immediately amplified by our key influencers. This Chantal Baker video reaches more than 400,000 on Facebook. Um, one big thing that I would, I would really, really, really hope you guys decide to do is, is um, join the convoy. Join the convoy this weekend. It's happening. It's starting down in Bluff. There's another one starting in Cape Reinga, and then we're going to meet in the middle at Wellington. Freedom! About 100 protesters set up camp. I want our freedom back, man. That's it. We want you to run this is a decentralised movement, like no one's in charge of it, and it's about one cause, end the mandates. Is it though? A lot of people here want more than just the mandates lifted. They, like myself, want this whole governance and this whole structure of governance completely gone. What seemed like a set of really disparate people were unified um, by ideas that perhaps you might describe as anti-establishment, um, that have been shifted from being merely anti-establishment into being anti-government and anti-the state and the way in which our democracy runs. They blockade areas around the parliamentary grounds, camping on the lawn and surrounding areas. I knew how they felt, so I was worried about what was going to happen. We came together out of necessity around common purpose. And that common purpose was based on freedom, hope, love, and something better than this entire shithole that we've been given to us here in New Zealand. The protest of peace and love, as protesters send death messages to members of parliament. That's hang em high chalked on the parliamentary forecourt. Was there anything about the Wellington protest or anything surrounding it in the back channels, if you like, that, that came to your attention that was of concern? As you say, although we didn't monitor the protest, we were aware that some, um, some of the people of concern to us because of their violent extremist beliefs took an active interest in the protest. So we did know that there were some people of concern to us that had a connection with the protest. So all you ex-military, all you ex-police who's talking about crap about this country, come here, find me, and let's protect these people. They are, their lives have been destroyed, and for us to stand by and just watch it happen, we are guilty and we are cowards. <laughs> yeah. We have done the popular uprising, let's finish this, 
Let's take it back. You can have people all the way from a far-right neo-Nazi aligning with someone who is a hippie influencer mum uh, about health and wellness on Instagram. And why? Because their views align on the pandemic and their views align on vaccines and lockdown measures. And then uh, they can go get connected, share information, form very strong bonds that are hostile to outside opinion and take to the streets to share those opinions. Ellie Evans is from Tauranga. She lost her job in the health sector when she chose not to be vaccinated. Bad things happen when good people stand by and do nothing. I'm not standing by. What does your family think about the fact that you're here? Um, my kids, um, yeah, they, they don't know. Why and haven't you told the children? Um, just been too busy fighting for freedom and I think that they're just going along and getting the jab. And when the pandemic came along, it cut off a lot of people from those peer relationships, whether it be their friends, their families, their colleagues, they lost a lot of those relationships. And so they found them with other people who shared their extreme beliefs. Well, I don't actually call it a vaccine, I call it a jab. I want to get my gear. Valerie from Mount Monganui is in her mid-60s. This is the first time she's ever protested. I've never done anything like this before, but I want to be, I want my grandchildren to say, my nana was here, my nana was here standing up for me. We're just trying to fight for our freedom because we're losing our freedom. Yeah, look around. We're fighting for our freedom. How are they taking away your freedom? By forcing me to get an experimental drug. I've looked into it. I know people have got sick. I know lots of people have got sick from this vaccine. You know them personally? Yes, I've seen them. The distortions and strategies we've learned about come to life. Where do you um, research this? Where do you find your information that's helped you form this okay. view? So Voices for Freedom are very good. I very much trust what they say. Uh, Counterspin media are a little bit radical, but sometimes have some good... What do you, what do you like about Counterspin media? Well, like, they, <laughs> they can be a bit rough and ready, but they're out there. They're out there and they're filming the truth. Do you consume any mainstream media? I stopped watching the news about three months ago because I just got sick of hearing the same narrative, to be quite honest. So what's the same narrative that you got sick of hearing? What's that narrative? That we all need to be jabbed. That we all need to be jabbed if we're going to live, if we're going to survive. That there's a terrible virus going around. There's lies. The media are, are lies. The audience have been shifted into believing in a completely alternative media universe. So their realities are splintered. They genuinely believe that you are an agent of mainstream media, that mainstream media is um, propaganda merchants for the governmental or intergovernmental conspiracy that's taking place, much in the same way as I'm a paid shill for, for these things too. On day three, police concerned about the escalating situation make some arrests, but the protest is not ended. Don't pay no mind to these hapu, iwi, um, Orunanga that are saying that they don't want us here too bad. We're not going anywhere and that's all I have to say about that. To exploit their own, our own histories of colonisation, dispossession and trauma, it is incredibly offensive. It makes me incredibly angry to think that you could see that there's any resonance or synergy. There isn't. And I think those people were manipulated and it makes and it's un, I feel uncomfortable in saying that because you don't want to deny either the agency of those people for their own thoughts and behaviors and I mean those Maori individuals but in the broader picture for them to ally themselves with those people and those movements is incre is disgusts me police next attempt to remove protesters in the process of arresting more than 100 people but the operation fails and then numbers build, at times to 3,000. Police reinforcements are brought in from around the country. Two weeks in, police strengthen the perimeter so protesters' vehicles can leave, but no more can enter. Police say human faeces are thrown at them, but protesters deny that. There are another seven arrests. The next day, a car is driven at police. 
You know, my message would be to anyone who is down there who believes that they are part of a peaceful protest, that is not what we've seen today. I would encourage them to leave. But they don't leave. So early in the morning of March 2nd, 24 days after the occupation began, police move. forced their way into Freedom Village and it was actually quite terrifying, quite terrifying. and I thought, that's not OK. I was drawn to the, to the love, the peace, the unity, and could not believe that what was happening that day was happening. When people hear repeatedly that journalists are paid off agents of the state, this is how they react. That guy, we don't need your fake news. Yeah, this, is, this is real news. Maybe you should go stand. Yeah, maybe you should go get a taste of what the cops are doing to our people. Yeah. 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 I don't care what you guys say. Go. Yeah. 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 See you yeah. all. Yeah. Our videos will be full later. What are you documentary? Bullshit! I'll make this it stuff. We're we're documentary stuff. And I've seen What's a lot of stuff? footage, What's a lot of photos important? on stuff that's rubbishing my people here. That's been here since day one. Come, mother. I don't care. Fucking disgusting. I don't know how you can sleep at night, eh? Staff colleagues are also hounded out by an angry mob, one wanting to hang them. And as the protest becomes a riot, Chantal Baker trains her camera on us. Mainstream media, you started this. It was your propaganda that caused this. Your propaganda caused all of this. Since they don't trust journalists, they bypass the media completely. Everywhere you turn, someone is live streaming. Including, of course, Counterspin Media. Seeing a children's playground on fire in the nation's parliament is a very visceral signal that something has gone horribly wrong with these groups and with the health of our democracy and society. Get on to it, motherfucker. I've got photos of you, brother. 
experienced this kind of hostility just for doing our jobs anywhere in the world we've reported. By the evening, Parliament grounds have been cleared, but there's a final standoff on the streets. something that um, violent and that public was was really quite quite horrifying and hard to believe that that, that was that was our Aotearoa, really really was all of that for what what will be salvaged and most importantly what happens next as the cleanup begins so do the recriminations Counterspin says they may have lost the battle, but the war has only begun. Can you imagine if a few boys out of their boot bought AK-47s, those Muppets would have run for the hills. You know what I mean? That's the problem. As you say, you disarm a population under false flags so the government can then come and eviscerate your entire existence and subjugate you that easily because you have no longer got the ability to um, defend yourself. The next time, there's going to be a next time, don't bring a pen, bring a sword. This isn't over. Like, I, I think, do some people feel maybe that after the protest finished that somehow it was going to be over, it's not over? <laughs> Voices for Freedom and Chantal Baker get together to establish a narrative about why the protest turned violent. You can't say that all these people, you cannot say the protesters were violent. It's a blatant lie. It's like me saying the police are all pedophiles. Right at the very end, there were people mm. I... 100% never seen, didn't look anything like that, anything to do with what had been going on. They came in, I now, people say different things. Who knows exactly who they were or whether we'll get to the bottom of it and whether they were plants or anything, but they were not the people who'd been there or who cared about the protest. It's the same claim made after the US Capitol riots. New Zealand's biggest neo-Nazi group, Action Zealandia, posts on Telegram that they are still piecing together information from men on the ground during the protests, confirming they were part of it, and blaming Antifa, left-wing anti-fascists, for starting the fires to make the far-right look bad. 
Others blame the fires on the police. Valerie, the protester from Mount Monganui, sends us what she says is incriminating evidence. There's the guys watching, fully masked. But actually, this is a protester trying to stop the fires being lit. It's an interesting study of how fake news spreads. I wouldn't like to be a person who spread disinformation. Did you send it to very many people? Can't remember. And it's a study of the mainstreaming of violence. Remember we showed you two of our staff colleagues? Being chased out by an angry mob. And look who's right in the thick of it. We want to find out what Ali Evans thinks about it now. Oh, I'm in there. Mm, that's me. Yeah. What do you think it might have been like for those journalists? Perhaps you might have got a taste of what we've been experiencing for months. Um, I don't know. The audience that you're talking about, this woman who, who was like, no, they deserve it, has been primed to view government, state officials, media, academia, and in fact anyone who disagrees with their point of view as members of that out-group who deserve everything that's coming to them. I wasn't threatening violence, I just wanted you to, to get out so that you could stop reporting um, lies. So you have no regrets about your role in that mob? I'm sorry, I don't have a problem. I, I did not. I have never threatened anybody. So how have we as a country got to the place where it's OK to respond to other people like this? It is sad where we've got to as a country, but what else can we do? We could, we could not be violent we... towards each I, other. I was not violent. Because it's necessary violence. It's protective violence. Because if you genuinely believe that those people are responsible for a genocide or a democide, then surely it's a reasonable reaction. Can I ask what you experience? Yeah, I mean, I um, experience targeted harassment, um, uh, emails, phone calls, um, talking about me online, stalking my Twitter, stalking my Instagram, stalking my LinkedIn, stealing photos, posting them, talking about the consequences that will happen for myself and for my family. Your targeting of me, Te Punaha Maratini, all of the media, your guys' targeting of me is a glaring admission that you know I've got your fucking numbers, man. I literally, I've got just oodles of shit on you people. The intent is to silence and to chill the voices that stand up for minorities and, and um, marginalised groups. It is chilling when posts threatening citizens' arrests and jail get this response. And knowing that they're going to get hung. <laughs> I'll gladly be an enforcer, brother. Hey, hey. With exposure from the protest over, it's a risky time for our key players. They need new ways to keep their audience's attention. So they pivot from COVID to new topics. It's called agenda surfing. We're not going to let you threaten our children anymore. Amy Benjamin celebrates the US overturning of abortion rights. We're not going to let you drink their blood. We're not going to let you get their stem cells. Hands off our young. You ghoulish motherfuckers. On Telegram, in the Counterspin chat group, they post parts of the prohibited manifesto of the Buffalo mass shooter, calling it a false flag. And Calvin Alp uses the discussion to post a page calling the Christchurch massacre a false flag too. The page includes banned video from inside the mosque. Putin, and yes, I support Putin and this people, so you can stick your Ukrainian flag up your ass. And um, Alp repeats yeah, Russian propaganda yeah. spread by QAnon about the invasion of Ukraine. So does Chantal Baker. People are saying, why are mainstream media not looking into this? Why are they all saying, oh my gosh, you know, poor Ukraine, that's terrible, or not going, is there It's an alternate reality, but it's no longer fringe. Voices for Freedom now has three times the followers on Telegram than it ever had on Facebook. 
and over 100,000 members, issuing them a rallying call that sounds like a direct threat to democracy. Make the country ungovernable. New Zealand to strengthen resilience, to start really looking at what it takes to become ungovernable. And that way is that when the government says jump, we don't need to. There's no way we can't create our own nation. Because we know the government's got no claim to any of this land. They're a creature of fiction statute, and, and therefore they're not living. People who are interested in disrupting and, and destroying transparent social democracies are watching New Zealand and they're participating through agents and through actors. They have an interest in seeing what can be achieved. Josie is watching too in frustration. What do you think now when you look back on what you believed? I think I was duped and I would have done anything to, to stop the bad guys because the, 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 the fate, the stakes of the whole world like, you have to do anything. And so you can get, you can literally get pulled down a path of delusions to, you know, becoming a fucking stormtrooper, like. In the wake of the police clearance of the Wellington protest, the Combined Threat Assessment Group issues new risk briefings warning that a small number of politically motivated violent extremists have the intent to carry out an act of violence in reprisal, that it would likely involve an inspired lone actor or small group directed at authority figures or government buildings, that the attack could happen with little or no intelligence forewarning. I think there are people out there that would be motivated enough to do it. We're not that special. <laughs> We, 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 we have people that could or would do those things. And if we think that the scenes we saw in Wellington at the end of this story, then we're very much mistaken because those unhealthy information habits in society still exist. The people who are manipulating that are getting better at doing so. And where does all of this end? Wellington was just the beginning. I fear that it's gonna get a lot worse. You can predict what they will say that none of what we've told you is true because we're mainstream media and we can't be trusted. That's why we wanted you to see and hear it all in their own words. Do you think we are going to be nice about it? Do you think that we aren't going to get really angry? Do you think that the people, the politicians, the elites, the all of the people who have collaborated to do this crap against us, do you think they'll be able to walk down the street without getting themselves killed? I don't think so. So, uh, even in New Zealand, I, I genuinely believe that there will be such contempt, such anger, and such vitriol for what has happened to us that even uh, New Zealand politicians uh, will fear for their lives, and rightfully so. Have a good one. <laughs>